Welcome everybody to another CTC webinar. My name is Sean Zerbis, Technical Evangelist at CTC, and today I get to bring you a wonderful new tool from our CTC Express tool. You're gonna to find this on the project suite and it's called Invisibility Advisor. I'll show you exactly where you can find it in just a moment here. But let's kind of jump in and take a look at what we're talking about today. So oftentimes I get calls from clients who are rather frustrated. They're trying to figure out some invisibility issues in their projects. They can't figure out why in a particular view something in the Revit model is not able to be shown. And oftentimes, uh, myself included, we waste a lot of time digging through the nearly 60 different reasons why something might not be visible. Um, just the other day, I was working with a client and we had this exact problem and we spent 20 minutes trying to figure it out and we realized, hey, we've got the invisibility advisor, we can use that. And it solved our problem in less than five minutes as opposed to us wasting you know, nearly 20 to 30 minutes trying to figure out why something wasn't showing up. So we're gonna discuss here how you can rapidly discover, fix, and find all the reasons for the invisibility issues you might be having in your problem, in your project. So again, quickly, just to kind of rehash this, there's 60 different reasons why an element might not be visible. There's a lot of troubleshooting time that gets taken just to mainly go through it. And oftentimes, many of us, again, myself included, forget different reasons why something may not be visible. So, we're going to take a look today at how you can, first of all, access the Invisibility Advisor, how you can navigate the interface. We're going to kind of go through the interface a little bit. Uh, we're going to take a look at how you can select elements and which views you're going to try and solve invisibility within. We're going to navigate those results, and we're also going to talk about rechecking some of these problems that might show up so you can really decide if you have actually resolved them or not. All right, let's jump right in into Revit, and we're gonna take a look here. So I'm gonna pull Revit up, pull it forward, and we're gonna take a look at a floor plan out here. I have a code plan active, or will in a moment here. Yep, there we go, I have a, a code plan active. And when I'm dealing with a code plan here, in my case, in an architectural plan, or if I was dealing with this, for example, uh, as an electrical floor plan, and I'm trying to lay out power devices in, say, a training room, I may wanna figure out where some of those components are in here, I want to see all the furniture, all the desks, all the chairs, things like that. You know, in an emergency situation, if I'm standing in the back corner and I'm trying to figure out the egress path, it's not straight to the door. Uh, it's going to be around some of the furniture unless I want to try to run in through some you know, heavy desk. So uh, in this case, if I was going to turn on the furniture in this plan, assuming there is any in the model, I'm typically going to go over here to visibility graphics. I'm going to probably scroll down and just check furniture, make sure that it's turned on. In this case, I also happen to have furniture systems already turned on. When I click OK, nothing happens. And you go, well, yeah, Sean, you noob, why don't you just use the reveal hidden elements object down there at the bottom? So I can do that reveal hidden elements here. I can click that button, and that'll show me all the elements that are hidden in my view that I can actually or should actually be able to see. I can see some things, like uh, in this case, I've got a section marker, I've got an elevation tag or something out there. There might be a few other things, but what I'm not seeing is furniture. Well, I'm gonna turn that back off again since it's not working anyway. And I'm gonna go take a look over here at a finished floor plan where perhaps I can see furniture. So I'm seeing it out here. In fact, let's tile these side by side, by side. Let's get rid of that third one there. And uh, let's zoom into this particular training room once again. And let's just make sure that I'm in the right area and the right floor of my building. If I click on this, first of all, this, uh, component tells me it's hosted to level one, which is great. If I click back into this view, I can see that I'm in the right area in my building and that my view is based on level one. Well, if I click to the view, uh, if I hit escape there on that furniture, uh, I can see the view itself is based on, there it is, associated level, level one. So I should be in the right area of my building, but I'm not seeing it. So now I get to go through the fun of tracking down all of the different reasons why that chair or that furniture component might not be visible over here in my code plan. Well, instead of me doing this all completely by hand, I'm gonna to go to the invisibility advisor up here at the top. Now I've already turned on the visibility graphics override there for the model category of furniture. I turned the furniture category on, did that myself, already done, and that's all well and good. The problem is that didn't fix the problem like, like, like I said. So I pulled up the invisibility advisor and you can find it again here at Revit Express Tools, Project Suite, invisibility advisor is actually the third paid tool in the project suite. If you don't have this yet, double check your version of the project suite. You can do that by opening up any tool and clicking the about option and you should be someplace at 18.0.6 or better. 
I know all the 19.0 versions, if you have those all already, uh, those will have the Invisibility Advisor as well. So check that first, make sure at least at the 18.0.6 version of the uh, uh, project suite of tools. All right, once the Invisibility Advisor itself is open, there's a couple of different ways you can actually select elements. I personally prefer using selection only. Just checking this box, I can actually click out here into Revit. This dialog box is what we call programmatically modeless. What that means is I can navigate Revit. I can call up different commands here. I can actually start drawing new stuff if I really want to and leave that invisibility advisor open. So you don't have to close this dialog box to be able to use this tool, which is great. That also means that if you check this selection only box, as long as you can see a component in some view, like I can in this uh, finished floor plan view, I can just directly select it. Okay, when I do that, when I click back into the box, it'll say it found this piece of furniture, it's the only thing that it has in its selection, and that's what I'm gonna resolve the invisibility down here in the target view of code plan. Now the reason why it knew code plan over here was because I happened to have that view active when I opened up Invisibility Advisor in the first place. However, you can always drop this list down and any active view or open views you have in your current Revit session, you can solve for the invisibility of that element in any of those open views for your current project file. Now, if I happen to be over here in the actual code plan, floor plan view, it'll actually tell me that is my active view, right? You can also do select element here. So instead of using selection only, if I had this unchecked for some reason, I could go back and do just select element. That'll call up a specific selection command to allow me to pick objects in my model. You can also select by ID. So if for some reason uh, you know the element ID of an object but you can't see it anywhere, you can do selection by element ID. And you can also do selection by crossing. Now personally I tend to not use this. I use it kind of only as a last resort. Um, this one here, if I was to go into this code plan floor plan and do a crossing selection, it'll actually create a crossing selection core to the entire building and you'll select every object in that core throughout the entire model vertically. Um, or if I was in a section cut view, um, maybe it would cut straight towards me and straight through the model all the way front to back, right? So it does take a little bit longer to build this up because Revit, or the, the tool Invisibility Advisor has to go through and select everything. So while I have used this in cases where I really couldn't find the element, uh, including in a 3D view, oddly enough, um, th this can be a useful tool. All right, in this case, I've got my selection already set up up here. Uh, once again, I've got this chair selected already. It's got that chosen here. I'm in my code plan, and that's where I want to find this element over here, why it's not actually being visible. So I'm gonna click Find Element at the bottom right corner. Now this is gonna rip through my model, and it's gonna find every possible reason why this element may not be visible. Anything that's in gray is kind of less likely, very unlikely in fact. Like there could be some line work on that object. We can't fully detect it. There's line work being done in this view, but we can't necessarily say if it's being done on that chair. So this is kind of like a maybe. I usually ignore these unless it's my, all my other options don't show up. Here at the top, I can actually see that there's view filters that are set to hide this element. There's also view range settings that might be hiding it and there's an associate, uh, associated work set this element is on that's invisible uh, in this particular view. So I'm just gonna go top to bottom and start resolving these and uh, take a look at what happens. So first off, when it says that there's something that's set to hide an element or you know whatever that's, that's hiding something in here, you can always click show. What this will try to do, if it can, is it'll open up that portion of the Revit interface. Like in this case, it actually opened up the visibility graphics dialog box it opened up the filters tab, it puts my cursor right there, and then all I have to do is go through and read through the filters themselves. It doesn't point directly at the filter because there might be more than one, um, but it does indicate at least the area in Revit where this particular uh, control is changed. Now in this case, there's only one filter in this view. Somebody made a filter for furniture, uh, and apparently that object is included in that, and it's told to not be visible. So if I check visible here, that should theoretically make that object visible. And when I click OK, go back into Revit out here, uh, unfortunately, I don't see that object. Now, the real problem that you run into in a lot of cases when, when individuals in your firm are trying to resolve invisibility issues is they'll go back to that area and they'll undo what they just did because it didn't fix their problem. And they don't want to change other things that could be problematic. So they, they undo some of their changes or they might just hit the undo button. Well, the problem is, at least in the case of this particular visibility issue, 
This is a compound problem. There's more than one reason why this object is not visible. So once I fix something, I clicked show and I made the change, I'm gonna come back and just hit check again and let it rerun the checks and see if what I did actually fixed it. And if it didn't fix it, then maybe I would undo and go back into that dialog box and change something else. That would be you know, the case if perhaps I had multiple filters in there and maybe it wasn't clearly named. I thought I turned the right one on, but perhaps I didn't, right? So you can use this tool to help you determine whether or not the one that you just changed is the correct one. In this case, because filters is now removed from my list, uh, it would appear that that is the correct change that I've made. You can also do things in here like just automatically fixing things. Maybe I don't feel like going to the view range setting and changing anything. I can just click fix. Now, when you do that, when I do most anything in here, Invisibility Advisor is gonna warn you that whatever you're changing might affect many elements. And it really wants to know if you wanna continue. Now, of course, you can hide this box by checking the do not show me this warning box again. Um, but you know, by default, I leave it on so I can warn people about this, of course. But in your firm, you can obviously turn this off. Obviously, you know, if you're gonna just change a view range, things are going to probably show, you know, the view is probably gonna show more things than you were expecting. I'm gonna click okay here, and Invisibility Advisor is gonna make the change for me. I will say this as well. Sometimes when Invisibility Advisor directly makes the change, it might not do exactly what you'd expect. If I go over here into the view range for this particular view, notice how it set the bottom of my view range to 7, 256, seven inch. That's kind of silly to me. And the, the view depth, same thing, 7, 256 of an inch. My cut plane's way up at six feet. And I don't know what the view range was before because I didn't actually have it show it to me, but when I did tell it to fix it, it did change some settings inside of here. But again, sometimes you might get some oddball settings. I probably wouldn't use this, but you know what? It thinks it's gonna show me the furniture, so I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm just gonna cancel out of this box and I'm just gonna check again to see if that maybe had resolved my issue. In this case, there's one final thing that's likely to be causing my invisibility, and that is there's an associated work set that's invisible. And again, I could click show, have it open up the visibility graphics dialog box, drop me on the work set tab, but I'm just gonna click fix and have it go through and just change that work set for me. Now, if everything's fixed itself as I think it does, and in this case, this unknown one, like I mentioned earlier, is very unlikely, so it didn't actually do anything for me. But now that I've fixed everything, the furniture is actually showing in my view. And I can actually choose to close this. I could click done, which will actually open up the original invisibility advisor dialog box again, which perhaps I've got floated off to a separate monitor. Um, but I can actually continue to leverage this to find other things and other invisibility issues that exist in my model. But ultimately, that can save me a ton of time. If I just went through and clicked fix, 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 fix for each of the individual problems, and it turned the furniture on in my view, because it's real time. It'll turn the furniture on as soon as it's actually visible. Once it's done, you know, I see that object. Now, if you're using this you know, for a temporary setting on a view, of course, you can leverage the, the temporary view overrides. You can enable that just as well. And Invisibility Advisor will work within that boundary. So it doesn't change the permanent settings in the view. It actually changes your temporary view settings as well, which is fantastic because you can go, you know, hey, I'm in a conduit plan or I'm in a, you know, HVAC duct plan or whatever the case might be. You can be in one of those plans, have that view show you something temporarily, use Invisibility Advisor to have it change your settings to give you exactly what you need instead of you screwing around for a while trying to find it out. It'll tell you, it'll change it, and you can always revert back to your actual view settings whenever you're ready. Let's jump back really quickly into the PowerPoint here. Just take a look at what we've got. So just some quick conclusions. You can have some immense time savings just by leveraging the Invisibility Advisor because users won't be out there hunting for visibility issues. It can save you so much time. Uh, this also is a great way to educate people about invisibility problems. You know, if they cause the problem themselves, that's fantastic. You can actually have Invisibility Advisor show you some more information about the problem. Now, I didn't actually show you that, but let's let's undo some of these things inside of here, and let's just take a look at Invisibility Advisor in one more aspect here. If I go back to the Express Tools and I go to Invisibility Advisor, just calling it up one more time. Again, selection only is still checked. My code plan is still my active view. I'm gonna click over to my uh, uh, life sit, no, that's my furniture plan, um, and tell it that I'm still solving for invisibility over here. When it does the invisibility check, and it's giving me exactly the same results again, if I click 
more on any one of these, it'll give you a bit of a description that'll tell you a bit more about what's controlling the invisibility there for that object and some descriptions as to why that might be causing the problem and what a person can do, a little bit about what that person can do to fix it. But it's not gonna give you a full help dialogue, but it is gonna tell you a bit about you know, what the work set controls can do and perhaps a little bit of you know, advice about that. All right, so again, a little bit of education can be had by the end user, so they're actually learning about why something is not visible beyond just blindly solving the problem. So they have access to those tools. All right, well, hopefully this was meaningful for you guys today. Hopefully you actually will find some use with the Invisibility Advisor and it can help save you some time in your firms. Uh, we always appreciate when you show up for our webinars and watch them. We also would appreciate if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the YouTube channel because all these webinars are being recorded and they're all being uploaded up to YouTube so you can review them later on in case you wanted to have somebody else view this information from today uh, or in case you wanted to review it for your own purposes. Again, thank you all. We appreciate your time and we hope you have a fantastic day.